Greetings and welcome to the Neurotheology YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about some ways to find credible neuroscience. So I want to share just a few ways to find credible neuroscience. The first is really beware of universal oversimplified or overstated claims. If you find any research article or book that seems to be overstated or, or universal, if it sounds too good to be true, it, it likely is too good to be true. Always look for limitations. Um, there are many what they call neuromyths out there, one of which is that we only use 10% of our brain. Another is that the right brain is for creativity. The left brain is for logic and linguistics, where there are many limitations behind uh, what we understand the left or the right hemisphere to be. Uh, that 10% of the brain that we use is something that's been completely discredited. Uh, but there are many, many different claims that are out there. So if, if you see an article, if it sounds too good to be true, it is likely too good to be true. Uh, another point on the same theme about universality or oversimplified or uh, overstated claims, um, an author that I really like is Raymond Tallis. He has a book called Aping Mankind, where he has two different terms that I want to share. Uh, one is called neuromania, another one is called Darwinitis. Neuromania is, is the rise of brain science as a source of the apparent explanation of every aspect of human life. And Raymond Tallis defines Darwinitis as explaining everything about people in terms of biological science. So in terms of neuromania, if there's an article that say, says they have isolated the, the spot in the brain for unconditional love, or they've isolated the God spot, uh, any kind of article that is so universal or it overstates uh, something about the human person that makes it so simplified, it's likely untrue. You can call it neuromania. Some people call it neuro nonsense. Uh, there are a lot of other terms out there. Uh, there's another term called neuro enchantment, uh, where if people are doing, uh, in, they're in a neuroscience research investigation, they might bring with them a lot of their prejudice or bias that something is going to happen. Um, so within neuroscience, there is a lot of misconception and a lot of universal or oversimplified claims that we can be aware of. Uh, a second point that I want to make uh, that's also kind of similar, is that we should also beware of study size. So if you're reading something, and one, if it doesn't share the source, beware of that. But look at the source. So if the source is a, a meta-study, that means they've looked at many different studies to create that particular research publication. Um, a study that might only have six participants, you're going to want to be very wary of uh, especially a very small sample size where they're making very universal claims. Those are always ones to be very wary of. Um, a particular example I want to use in terms of a meta-analysis a meta comes from an article in the Journal of American Medical Association that reports that mindfulness training effects are comparable with what would be expected from the use of an antidepressant in a primary care population, but without the associated toxicities. This same report also found that meditation programs can result in small to moderate reductions of multiple negative dimensions of psychological stress. So this is a uh, example. And as you can see in the slide there, I included the source. So you always want to find a source. And this particular example, um, it's a very credible um, publication. It's a meta-analysis, so it's dozens dozens uh, and even thousands of participants that were involved in what they looked at as meta-analysis, uh, many different studies to make these claims. And these claims are significant, but they are not so overstated or so oversimplified that they're going to be discredited. Um, so excellent, uh, excellent article, excellent example, and, and an excellent opportunity for us to do more meditation and mindfulness practices. Uh, a third point that I want to get into is beware of brain localization. So brain localization uh, can be defined as uh, the association of functions with particular areas of the brain, such as they are specialized modules and seeing them particularly in isolation. So what our understanding is of the brain continues to evolve and there are aspects of different parts of the brain that um, are very unique and and oftentimes when they're reported in investigations and publications, um, especially in pop culture, they can be oversimplified. Um, sometimes people might say that the amygdala is for emotions or uh, the hippocampus is for memory. 
Um, but more and more neuroscientists are finding that the brain and its interconnectivity, that each area of the brain is corresponding with other areas. So to isolate a particular area is a mistake. So there are a lot of limitations and as much as any particular part of the brain might be very central or key to any one aspect um, of our character, um, of our behavior, that it must be seen within this larger connectivity. And another thing that a lot of uh, neuroscientists are finding now also is more along the lines of interpersonal neurobiology or social neuroscience, where seeing a brain in isolation, many people are seeing that as a mistake now, and they're looking more at brains interconnected with other brains. I have another video on this channel about the temporal parietal junction and how we have this near instantaneous communication with other brains as we uh, interrelate. And it is highly powerful. And if we look at brains in isolation or parts of the brain in isolation, it's a real mistake. So if you've seen your publications that are doing that, uh, really look toward the limitations because that's gonna give you some more, uh, some more nuance to whatever particular part of the brain and how it interconnects with other parts. So the fourth thing I wanna share is about endorsements. Um, I'm gonna list in this video some of my favorite neuroscience research and authors. Uh, there's so many, um, but I had mentioned that particular, uh, that Journal of American Medical Association article because um, if, if you're finding neuroscience from a peer-reviewed publication, that's gonna give it more credibility. Um, when you find authors that publish a book where they have endorsements by other highly regarded or recognized authors, uh, that's also gonna give it some more credibility. So when you're looking for a book, you know, look up some of the authors that might have endorsed it, but also look, you know, who are those authors and what is their background? Are they seen as credible? You know, so this is another way to find credible neuroscience. So I hope you found some uh, good information on this website. Really appreciate you being here. Always in, uh, I'd like to mention my other two websites, christianneuroscience.com that has all sorts of information uh, on neuroscience from a Christian point of view, as well as spiritualneuroscience.com that has all sorts of information from a secular, academic, as well as interfaith perspective um, that you might also be interested in. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you find some credible neuroscience. Take care.